The Rescue Princesses, Chapter 3, Climbing in the Dark Crystal chandeliers lit up the enormous banquet hall and rich tapestries lined the walls. Emily gazed around in amazement, her gold tiara sparkling on top of her red curls. Over her dress, she wore the black velvet cloak her mom had chosen for her. Her stomach rumbled as delicious dinner smells drifted through from the kitchens. The kings and queens of the twenty royal families from all around the world were bowing and chatting with one another. The empress of the Marika Isles swept by, wearing a coral necklace that swung grandly from her neck. The king of Undala, looking very regal in his golden turban, bowed low to Queen Trudy of Leapland, who gave him a sharp nod. At her side, she clutched a boy with a sulky expression wearing an orange vest. Emily sat down at the banquet table next to her mom and dad. She knew who all the kings and queens were because she'd been studying them in her lessons for weeks. But she was thankful that she didn't have to start talking and curtsying to them all yet. The grand ball would take place in two days' time. Until then, she was happy to stay in the background. Emily, please remove your elbows from the table, whispered her mom. Emily took her elbows off and tried to sit up straight. It was harder than it looked. She gazed across the banquet hall and suddenly felt her shoulders lighten, tighten. She gazed across the banquet hall and suddenly felt her shoulders tighten. At a far table sat the man with the deep voice and purple hat who'd shouted at her earlier. Luckily, he wasn't looking at her. He was smiling at the person sitting next to him, the twinkly-eyed King Goodland. He didn't look as fierce now, although Emily still hoped she wouldn't run into a him again any time soon. Queen Maria leaned toward her. As well as meeting the other princesses, you'll see some princes here that are your age. Look, there's Prince Olaf of Finia. Emily glanced at the tall, blonde-haired boy from Finia. Then she noticed the boy with the sulky face again. Who's the prince wearing orange next to the Queen of Leapland? whispered Emily, wondering why he looked so grumpy. Mom, why can't I have dessert first? whined the boy. You always let me at home. That's her son, Prince Samuel, said her mom quietly. Now remember, Emily, use the silverware from the outside first and chew slowly. Emily stared at the huge spread of knives, forks, and spoons next to her plate. Use the ones on the outside first, she thought. Why was there always so much to remember? A gong sounded to signal the start of the meal. The food tasted wonderful, but Emily's feet tapped impatiently. When could she slip out? Did she have to wait until every single person had finished? Finally, dessert was served. Bowls of chocolate pudding and tall ice cream sundaes were soon emptied, and the grown-ups began to murmur about having coffee in the drawing room. Emily sprang up. I'll be back in a minute, she said to her mom. Queen Maria nodded. Emily hurried out of the hall, down the passageway, and past the kitchens to the back door. Her hand gripped the flashlight that she tucked underneath her cloak. Afraid of being caught at the last moment, she rushed straight out the door and into the night. She felt small in the darkness. Switching on the light, she let the round beam travel over the garden. She tried to remember how everything had looked in daylight. Over to one side was the fountain and the maze. She followed the gravel path to a wide courtyard set out with chairs and tables. Then she hurried down a slope, and there, beyond the lawn, stood the biggest obstacle course she'd ever seen. She raced over to it, the beam of her flashlight bouncing as she ran. Where would she start? The zip line, of course. She climbed up the long ladder to the high platform, tucked the flashlight back in her pocket, and grabbed a hold of the rope. The thought of flying down there in the dark gave her a bubbly feeling in her stomach, 
half excited and half scared. She couldn't even see the other end of the zip line. It was too far away in the shadows. Her skirts rustled around her as she got ready to leap off the platform. Oh, she'd nearly forgotten. She couldn't go on the zip line wearing the huge cloak. It would only slow her down. She pulled the cloak off and laid it over the wooden railing behind her. Then, taking the rope in both hands, she jumped. The darkness rushed past her. She swooped down the line, feet dangling until she felt the crash as the bar hit the other end and her lung and her legs swung up. Then she plunged backward, slowing down steadily until her feet hit the ground. Whee! Emily let go of the rope, grinning widely. She loved that. It was just like flying. That was awesome. A girl came closer, her blonde hair and blue dress glimmering in the light spilling from the castle windows. Princess Clarabel? asked Emily. Clarabel nodded. Yes, it's me. I came out to look at the obstacle course. I can't believe you went all the way down there in the dark. It was amazing, said Emily. Are you going to try it? I might, Clarabelle chewed her lip. Maybe I'll see how fast it goes first. Woohoo! A yell came out of the darkness. Woohoo! Emily spun around, grabbing for her flashlight and shining it into the air. A figure in yellow climbed up the cargo net and swung herself over the top. Princess Lulu conquers the world, she shouted, scrambling down the other side. Emily and Clarabelle burst out laughing. One last figure came running down the slope, a dazzling green light fixed to her arm. Am I missing all the fun? said Princess Jaminta. Emily stared at her wrist. What's that? she asked. Jaminta held out her arm to show Emily the bracelet that glowed far brighter than her flashlight. It's made of emeralds. I found a way to make jewels work like gadgets, said Jaminta. I can give them power or make them warm, or I can make them light up just like this. I like using emeralds best. That's incredible, said Emily, admiringly. Ooh, I wish you could make my jewel glow, said Clarabelle, touching the dark blue sapphire that hung from a chain around her neck. Lulu came running over, landing in front of them with a double-flip somersault. I guess none of us could bear sitting still in that hall a second longer, she said, grinning. So who's next on the zip line? Let's race for it, said Emily. They raced to the ladder, laughing as they ran. Lulu reached it first. She pulled herself up, and the others followed. Climbing up last, Clarabelle looked a little worried as she peered down at the ground. When they all stood on the platform at the top, Emily said, Should we try going down it two at a time? But just then a screeching noise came out of the light. It sent tingles down Emily's neck. <coughs> what was that? It sounded horrible, exclaimed Lulu. That was a distress call, said Clarabelle. The sound of an animal in trouble. It came from out there in the forest added Jaminta, shining her emerald bracelet in that direction. We should go and find it, said Emily. We might be able to help. It's very dark, said Clarabelle nervously. But you're right. Some poor animal needs us. Let's go, said Lulu. The girls climbed swiftly back down the ladder and ran across the garden. They passed through the castle gates in a whirl of colored dresses and rushed out into the forest beyond. That's the end of chapter three, girls. I love you.